Hello, hello everyone. I think I'm good. Okay. This is my first um, children's hour contribution, so I hope that everybody who's out there um, enjoys. I've been so happy to be a part of um, the Berks County Quarantine Open Mic. Um, so yeah, it's exactly two o'clock right now, so I believe that I'm in the right time and starting everything very well. Welcome to the Hornberger house. Um, I call this my queendom. It's um, my bedroom that's on the top floor of our house here. All right, so um, those of you who know me know that I absolutely love tigers, so I thought that I'd dress up being, looking all tigery today. Um, but the I'm gonna do a story first, and then if I've got time, um, I would love to um, sing um, either a, so a song or two um, after this. Um, I thought that uh, since I absolutely love um, stories that talk about uh, like equality and just promoting love and um, love for everyone, no matter um, who you are, uh, whether like it's a we have different color skin, um, different. Uh, sexual orientations, gender identity, or gender expression, um, whether we're uh, a man or a woman. I just think all of us uh, should be treated equally and deserve uh, to be treated e with the equal um, amount of love. So um, I found this book that I totally forgot that I got um, years ago. Um, I believe it was, yeah, in 2016. Um, there was a movie that came out about this story. It is called The Case for Loving. And I realized, um, yeah, I'm sorry if everything ends up being kind of like <laughs> backwards with me um, using my phone here. Um, but the um, kiddos and anybody else who's watching should be able to see the pictures okay. Um, and I'll show them as I read. So, again, this is a book um, called The Case for Loving. Um, the Fight for Interracial Marriage um, by Selena Alco, and um, it was illustrated by Sean Qualls, and I believe that the two of them are um, a married interracial couple who made this story possible to be put into a children's book, so I hope you enjoy. Here we go. First comes love, then comes marriage. Donald, Peggy, and Sydney had two parents who loved them and who loved each other. In fact, from almost the moment that Richard Loving met Mildred Jeter, they wanted to get married and have a family. But for them, it wasn't simple. And here's why. Here's the picture of the Loving family. <laughs> Richard was white, a fair-skinned boy who got quickly summoned or er, <laughs> who got quickly sunburned by the July sun. Mildred was what they called colored in those days. Her skin was a creamy caramel. In 1958, they lived in the small town of Central Point, Virginia, where people of every shade from the color of chamomile to tea to summer midnight made their homes. So there's Richard right here. And just so you all know, um, Richard and Mildred Loving are actually a real couple. And this is about a real um, historical event that happened in the 1950s and 60s. Just so you all know that. Learning new things today about history. <clears throat> Richard Loving was a tall, quiet man of English and Irish heritage. The person he loved the most was Mildred Jeter. Mildred was part African American, part Native American, and she was thin as a rail. That's how she got the nickname Stringbean. When Richard popped the question, Stringbean jumped with joy. <laughs> I love the pictures in this book. <laughs> All right. The two were in love and they felt it should be their right to get married. Sadly, it was not. 
not in Virginia or 16 other states. In those places, marriage between people of different races was against the law. A hundred years earlier, slavery divided America along color lines. Even after slavery ended, some white people weren't used to blacks being free, let alone free to marry whom they chose. If you married someone who had skin color unlike your own, you could go to jail. Mildred and Richard wanted to get married, but they did not want to spend time in prison. So as you can see, like it was in the 1950s and 60s, there were separate water fountains even. Although they couldn't have a legal marriage in Virginia, they could write next door in Washington, D.C. So they invited a few friends and family to witness their wedding across state lines. At the ceremony, nobody objected when Richard said, I do, and Mildred said, I do too. The Lovings were officially pronounced husband and wife. The blushing bride and her groom smiled all the way home from D.C. back to their house in Virginia. They couldn't wait to start their family. There they are. Get married in Washington, D.C. <laughs> but soon, something terrible happened. In the middle of the night, they were awoken from their sleep. It was the police. An officer shouted at Richard, what are you doing with that woman? Richard proudly pointed to their marriage certificate hanging on their wall. That's not good here, the policeman boomed. Can you see the picture okay? Got a little bit of glare because I have skylight in my room up here. <laughs> And just like that, Mildred and Richard were taken away and locked up in jail. They were charged with unlawful cohabitation, which means that living together was against the law. The Lovings didn't think there was anything unlawful about their love at all. If anything, the, the way they were treated should have been unlawful. After a few nights behind bars, Richard and Mildred were told they had to leave Virginia if they wanted to continue to live together as Mr. and Mrs. Loving. So with heavy hearts, they, the pair hugged their families, packed their bags, and left their home. That must have been really scary. <sighs> they tried to make a life for themselves in DC. Richard found a job laying bricks and string bean gave birth to three babies, three different shades of milk chocolate brown. Their names were Donald, Peggy, and Sydney. But the city didn't suit the lovings. They were, there were too many cars, there was too much concrete. They missed Central Point with its rolling hills and open spaces. They missed their friends and their families and they missed their home. There they are in their city home. The kiddos are playing outside on the city streets. I've never lived in the city, so I think that I would feel similarly to the Lovings if I lived there. <laughs> they wanted to return to Virginia for good, so they hired lawyers to help fight for what was right. By now, it was 1966, and the times were a-changing. Brand new ideas like equal rights for people of all colors were replacing the old, fearful ways of thinking. <laughs> uh -huh. 
the lawyers worked around the clock to make the case for the interracial marriage as strong as possible. It was time to take the loving case all the way to the Supreme Court. I just think that it's cool that, <laughs> that their last name is Loving, and of course they're fighting for the lawful right to be able to marry each other. It's just so beautiful. <laughs> On June 12th, 1967, when the case of Loving versus Virginia began, Richard and Mildred stayed at home with Donald, Peggy, and Sidney. They were all nervous and afraid that they couldn't win the trial. The state argued that in order to preserve the purity of the white race, blacks and whites must remain separate. Then it was the Loving's lawyer's turn to present the case. They said it was unconstitutional to make marriage a crime because of their race and they read a message from Richard himself. Tell the court I love my wife, and it is just unfair that I can't live with her in Virginia. You tell him, Richard. It didn't take long for a decision to be made. It was unanimous. The court ruled in favor of the Lovings. Interracial couples could now legally marry in the state of Virginia. Richard and Mildred hugged. They had won their right to love. They were free at last. Yay! Woohoo! <laughs> Over nine years after their arrest, the Lovings packed their bags one final time. Richard planned to build a big roomy brick house in Central Point, Virginia. Stringbean was ready to start their life over. The Loving family returned to Virginia to live, and they lived happily and legally ever after. <laughs> Yay! We love it. <laughs> no pun intended. <clears throat> and that is the end of our story. Woohoo! Well, I hope that you all enjoyed that. Um, those of us who are um, watching, who watched from the beginning, and if you're just joining us, this is the um, children's hour. Um, and right now I'm going to be with you for another um, 15 minutes or so. Um, I'm Jesse, and we're having stories and songs <laughs> with Jesse right now. And I love tigers, so that's why I just felt like wearing a tiger ensemble for all of you lovely folks. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to do some singing now. I chose some songs that I think all the kiddos out there would like. And this is my friend. He's so huge, I can't like even fit him <laughs> in the shot very well. This is Travis. He's one of my um, many tiger friends. Um, even though that I'm almost 30 years old, folks, I absolutely love stuffed animals. You're never too old to have a stuffed animal to cuddle, especially during these times. Um, especially, yeah, when I don't have my boyfriend here to hug or if I'm not hugging my mom or my dad or my sister who lives in Florida. Shout out to you, Amanda. Hi. Hi. <laughs> then I hug my stuffed animals because yeah you're never too old to use um, the skills that you have and all the coping um, mechanisms that we can use especially healthy ones like hugging a stuffed animal or like I lit my candle here that's chilling on my desk um, those are ways that help keep me calm and keep me happy during these difficult times so I'm not sure about like all the kiddos who may be listening and their family members who know One Direction, but me and my younger sister absolutely love boy bands in general, but like, yeah, we were in a One Direction craze, especially when they first got together. So I'm going to be singing you a One Direction song next. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> You're insecure. Don't know what for. 
You're turning heads when you walk through the door. Don't need makeup to cover up. Being the way that you are is enough. Everyone else in the room can see it. Everyone else but you. Ooh, baby, you light up my world like nobody else. The way that you flip your hair gets me overwhelmed. And when you smile at the ground, it ain't hard to tell. You don't know. Oh, oh, you don't know you're beautiful. If only you saw what I could see. You'd understand why I want you so desperately. Right now I'm looking at you. I can't believe you don't know. Oh, oh. You don't know you're beautiful, uh oh, that's what makes you beautiful. <laughs> so girl, come on, you got it wrong. To prove I'm right, I put it in a song. I don't know why you're being shy and turn away when I look into your eyes. Everyone else in the room can see it. Everyone else but you Ooh, baby, you light up my world like nobody else The way that you flip your hair hits me overwhelmed And when you smile at the ground, it ain't hard to tell You don't know, uh oh You don't know you're beautiful If only you saw what I could see You'd understand why I want you so desperately Right now I'm looking at you I can't believe you don't know, uh oh you don't know you're beautiful, oh, oh, and that's what makes you beautiful. Na, 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 na. Na, 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 na. Baby, you light up my world like nobody else The way that you flip your hair gets me overwhelmed And when you smile at the ground, it ain't hard to tell You don't know you're beautiful The way that you flip your hair gets me overwhelmed And when you smile at the ground, it ain't hard to tell You don't know, uh oh you don't know you're beautiful You'll understand why I want you so desperately Right now I'm looking at you and I can't believe You don't know, uh oh You don't know you're beautiful, uh oh You don't know you're beautiful, uh oh That's what makes you beautiful Woo! <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Travis. Uh-huh, he provided some dance moves, too. <laughs> oh, I'm a goof. That's okay. Hopefully you all love it. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. <laughs> all right. This next one, <laughs> I think some people are, yeah, some parents are going to be, like, really annoyed at me that this might get in your children's head. I know that when I first heard this silly song, um, <laughs> it really got in my head, and, like, especially my one cousin, as she, like, couldn't stop singing it. <laughs> I don't think any of you will know this, unless you follow um, Glozel Green, which is another YouTuber as close as I do. Oh, we got to... Oh, we got YouTube ads. That's okay. All right. So, <laughs> technically, I, okay, this is going to be a first. Well, not really a first. I've, I've lip synced things before, but yeah, I'm going to have to lip sync this one. So, and if you want to see the real video um, of this song that is um, written by Glozel Green, you just have to um, put into your YouTube search bar, Glozel, and you should find this song. It is really silly. Sorry, parents. Like I said, if this gets into your kids' heads, and of course, I think they're going to be like giggling and singing this because it has to do with farts, and farts are always silly. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, I had a wonderful time today, and then I had to go to the store. And most of my songs are really deep. They come from a truthful place, and I'd like to dedicate this song to the young lady that greeted me at the store. 
Actually, she wasn't that young. She was about 80, 80 years old who greeted me at the store. It's really deep. <clears throat> you said, how may I help you? And then I smelt poo. I looked all around me. I even checked my shoes. The burning in my eyes. Then I realized... Is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? Is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? Is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? Is it? I want to know. Uh, uh. Is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? Is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? I smelled something foul. It must be your bowels. It's kind of demonic. You need a colonic. Is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? Is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? Break it down. Is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? Did you your breath? Oh, did you just fart? Is that your breath? Oh, did you just Is that your breath? Oh, did you just Is that your breath? Oh, did you just I want to know. I want to know. Is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? Is that your breath? Oh, did you just... Everyone, is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? How may I help you? Your breath smell like poo. I looked all around me. I even checked my shoes. Is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? Is that your breath? Oh, did you just fart? Oh, <laughs> sorry i just <laughs> oh my god i had to do that <laughs> oh, i hope that you guys enjoyed that i know it was ridiculous <laughs> all righty well <laughs> well let's <laughs> let's see i i think i actually have time for um for more oh god okay <laughs> all right kiddos you gotta, you gotta promise me that you're gonna do the hand motions to this next one, okay? Okay? I know I can't see you at home, but you better be doing them hand motions, okay? Here we go. Young man, there's no need to feel down. I said, young man. Pick yourself off the ground, I said, young man, cause you're in a new town. There's no need to be unhappy, young man. There's a place you can go, but not right now, young man. <laughs> when you're short on your dough, you can stay there. And I'm sure you will find many ways to have a good time. Now everybody better do it. You better do it. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. <laughs> YMCA. You got everything for you men to enjoy. You can hang out with all your boys. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. <laughs> YMCA. You can get yourself clean, you can have a good meal, you can do whatever you feel. Young men, are you listening to me? I said, young men, what do you want to be? I said, young men, you can make real your dreams, but you got to know this one thing. Makes it all by yourself, I said, young men. Put that pride on a shelf and just go there to the YMCA. I'm sure they can help you today. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. <laughs> YMCA. They have everything for you to enjoy. You can hang out with all the boys. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. You can get yourself clean. You can have a good meal. You can do whatever you feel. Young men, I was once in your shoes. I said, young men, down and out with that blues. I felt no man. 
cared if I were alive. I felt the whole world was quarantined. <laughs> oh, I added that one, sorry. Young man, <laughs> take a walk up the street. I said, young man, there's the YMCA. They can start you back on your way. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. YMCA. They <laughs> have everything for you men to enjoy. You can hang out with all the boys. YMCA. It's fun to stay at the YMCA. Young man, young man, there's no need to feel down. Young man, young man, get yourself off the ground. YMCA, just go to the YMCA. Young man, young man. Young man, young man. <laughs> oh, whoa, okay. <laughs> Accidentally pressed the wrong button. <laughs> okay, well. Yeah, it's about like 2.26. Um, I'm sure that there's someone else um, ready to start their section of um, this uh, children's hour for all of you. And um, again, thank you so much for having me. I'm Jessie. Thanks for listening to story and Stories and Songs with Jessie. And yep, everybody just stay, stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. Travis says bye-bye too. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>